What's up guys, welcome to today's video. So we are currently in the Jeep on our way to the Jeep dealership because I want to do some work on this car and I need a gasket and I like putting everything OEM on this car. So let's go get this thing that we need and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do. All right, so made it back from the dealership. The plan is today is like a super nice winter day. Like it's supposed to be 63 degrees. So I've been wanting to do the coolant flush on this thing just because I've never done it. And I've owned this car for a while. We've put tens of thousands of miles on it and I think it's time. So I've been wanting to do it, but I also thought if I do it now, we've put so many miles on it that either the thermostat and or water pump can give out shortly after and I don't want to have to drain that coolant again put it back in because I like using OEM stuff and even OEM coolant is pretty expensive so we're gonna be doing the water pump thermostat and coolant flush I guess because I mean coolant has to come out so yeah we're gonna do those things to this since we just drove it though everything in there is hot so we're not gonna touch it right now we're gonna give it about half an hour to cool down a little bit and then we're gonna work on it because like I said the coolant right now is hot and burning yourself is not cool okay so coolant should be pretty cooled down now let me go over what you need in order to do this job so you're gonna need your thermostat um, it comes with this housing already built into it. So it's not just the thermostat, it's the housing as well. I'll put the part numbers and links to where you can buy these in the description. But yeah, you need this, you need your water pump, and you need your water pump gasket. This is what I didn't have, so I had to go to the dealership to get it right now because I thought it would come with one, but it actually didn't. So you need those three things, and then you're gonna need some coolant. So you can either get some 50-50 mix, and sometimes for about the same price, if not just a couple dollars more, you can get some concentrate. So you have to mix this with some distilled water. Uh, these gallons cost like 80 cents at Walmart. And basically you buy these two and you get double the coolant for just either sometimes same price or just a couple dollars more. So I always opt for this. So those are the parts you'll need in order to do this job. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on working on this and I'll explain the tools you need to get this job done and how to do everything. So first things first, I'm gonna start by taking this big cover off and then this intake and it'll give us all the space that we need to work in there. So this cover just pops off if you just pull on it a little bit. So you could take that, set it to the side and then this intake boot you want to take it off right here, this worm clamp right here. You can either use a flathead or a 8 millimeter socket. So you take it off there and then you follow it all the way back to the throttle body. And then same thing here, either flathead or 8 millimeter. Make sure you take this sensor off and that's about it. All right, so one thing I forgot is you have to pop this clip off. I use these little trim panel poppers, and then you also have to take these lines out of the way. Basically, if you see this right here, you just push on this upwards and then pull it out, and then it should come out. So once you have those two things off, then you should be able to just take it off completely. I think it just pops into place. There we go. So. Now this whole thing comes out and you can set this aside as well and now you have all of this open space. So the thermostat housing is here and the water pump is basically a big chunk right here where this uh, pulley is. I believe this pulley is also on it and then these two uh, coolant hoses are on it as well. So now what you want to do is you want to take your serpentine belt off and start draining the coolant. The petcock is down here. This little red 
knob in there as you can see so you do have an under tray um, I'm lazy and I don't want to get under there and take it off I want to do the whole job under the hood not under the car so I have about a foot and a half of 3 8 tubing and I'm gonna put it down on the bottom let me show you guys so as you can see I got the clear tubing from the drain right below the petcock all the way down and it comes under the car right there so now all I have to do is throw my drain pan under there and then just start releasing make sure this is going to catch it and now I can just start releasing the petcock should be pretty easy and tight and then you can see the coolant starting to come out now now I'm going to take the radiator cap off and it should start coming out a lot more hopefully I don't blow the hose All right, you can see it draining down there now. So just let it drain all the way. And then, I mean, you're still gonna get some when you take your thermostat housing and water pump off. So just let that drain all the way. So while the coolant is draining, you can take your serpentine belt off now. Let me show you guys a quick trick. If you're hard headed like me and you think you're gonna forget how the serpentine belt goes, you can either A, take a picture of it and look at it afterwards or B, you can draw it out. So I like drawing it out sometimes. As you can see, I have A for alternator and then comes down to the tensioner, around the crank, up and around the water pump and then around the power steering pump and then it comes all the way up top across the idler pulley right here. So it makes kind of like a big T if you will. So to take the belt off, you wanna put a 3 8 ratchet in here and just twist it and then it will give the belt some wiggle room to just be able to slide it off i'm going to use a long 3 8 ratchet with an extension so basically just put it in there see if i can do this with one hand put it in there and then you pull up on it and then as you can see we took the tension off of it now so now we can go ahead and slide it off let me see if i can do this there we go so I got it off now I got it off the alternator so just let the tensioner go take your ratchet off and now you can take your belt completely off you want to inspect your belt to see if you have any cracks in it because if you do now would be the perfect time to replace it mine is still good so we're just gonna go ahead and reuse it. Now the last thing that's getting in your way is this right here. So you just wanna remove it from the bracket bolts right here. They are 16 millimeters. And you don't have to do it here. You can do it down here if you'd like as well. But I just think it's a lot easier to just get them up here. So now you can push this up and out of your way. Now you have all the bolts exposed for the water pump. So we're gonna start on the top and take this uh, thermostat housing off first. Then we'll move down to the water pump. Then we'll throw the water pump on, then throw the thermostat housing on, and then just button everything up again. Okay, so the thermostat housing has two bolts, one up top and then one on the bottom. They are both uh, T30 Torx bits so just stick your T30 in there crack it loose and then it should come out the water pump it has some that are 10 millimeter like this little one here this little one here this other little one here and then it also has some that are 16 so use your 16s wherever you need them
All right, so I got the thermostat housing off. I got the water pump off. One thing I do want to tell you guys is make sure that the gasket from the old uh, thermostat housing comes off because mine actually stayed on and if I would have forgotten and I would have just tightened mine, I would have either snapped the bolts or it would have been leaking and it just wouldn't have been good. So basically you have a bunch of random size bolts. You have nine 10 millimeters, you have one 13 here, you have one 15 here and obviously the idler pulley that bolt is part of what's holding the water pump on so that one's a 13 also so now that you got everything off you can go ahead and close the petcock and then you can take your hose off let that completely drain and you're done with this here's another tip for all the hard-headed guys or girls like me since these bolts are all different sizes and lengths like as you can see this one's long right here and then we have ones that are short like this. If you don't want to forget where they go, take your new one and get like a piece of cardboard and trace it. As you can see, I traced mine. So I know exactly where all the holes are because every little bump like this is like where a bolt goes. So I did that and I took them off one by one and I poked the hole where they belong. That way I know exactly where they go. So now all that's left to do is to clean the surface here so that the gasket makes perfect contact with the motor. I'm going to take some Scotch-Brite and some brake clean and just make sure everything is nice and clean and then we'll throw everything back on. Okay, so we got our new water pump, new thermostat housing and thermostat. We got the hoses put on. I just need to clamp this down. So I'll move this over here. Um, I put the hoses down here. I put the clamps pointing somewhere easier for maintenance next time. So I can come in like that and then like that here. So that'll be a lot easier for next time. So to put the belt on, I put it on on the alternator, around the tensioner, around the crank around the idler pulley here and the power or the ac yeah the ac compressor um i said power steering earlier on that it's the ac compressor um so yeah put it on around all those things then i loosened the tensioner and then i slid it over the water pump here because this is smooth so it's a lot easier to just wedge it over there so after you do that release it Make sure everything is in the grooves and lined up perfectly and you're good to go on that. So right now, like I said, I'm gonna move this hose clamp here. Gonna put this back and probably the intake tube. Then we're gonna fill it up, let it run so it can bleed all the air out of the system. All right guys, so we got everything put on. The only thing left to do is put the coolant in the system, 
then let it run and bleed out all the air inside. One thing I highly suggest you guys getting is this spill proof funnel kit. Um, it comes with all of these different attachments for different types of cars and radiators and whatnot. So just find the one that suits your application. I found that this one is a good candidate for what we're doing. So as you can see, I put it on, twist the cap on and this thing is not going anywhere. So basically you do that, you put your funnel in. It also has this plug so that when you finish topping it off, you just put this on and you can take it off without spilling anything. So it's pretty cool, pretty inexpensive. It's around $20, $30 on Amazon. I'll post a link to this as well because this is something I highly suggest. So let's go ahead and throw some coolant in here and bleed the system. So in order to get a 50-50 blend, since this is concentrate, is I'm going to put half of the gallon of water in this bucket right here and then I'm going to fill it up again with the coolant and then the water that I put in here, I'll put it in the coolant jug and then we'll have basically two bottles of 50-50. Okay, so I've put a little bit over a gallon and a quarter, I guess, in there. And it's being, it's staying stable right now. Make sure you always squeeze your radiator hoses because that makes the air bubbles come out, as you can see right there. So you keep squeezing them, the air bubble's gonna come out and it's gonna be replaced by coolant. So you'll see the level in the funnel drop. So just keep doing that for a while. Let it bleed on its own for a little bit. So once you've let it bleed out on its own for a while, you wanna come inside the car. You wanna start the car. And then turn your heater up all the way hot. And then blowing as hard as it can. And just let it run like that for a while. Basically what you're doing is opening up the heater core so that the coolant can flow through there get all the air pockets out of there and then you want to let it run for a while until it gets to operating temperature that way the thermostat will open and let everything fully cycle and then it'll get all the air out so just let it run like that for a while keep your eye out on your funnel right here make sure it doesn't go dry basically make sure it's topped off that way the bubbles can come out of there and be replaced with coolant and I'll catch up with you guys when it's all said and done also, one thing I forgot to mention is make sure, just take a look around and make sure that you don't have any leaks. It's pretty easy to see the whole water pump assembly and thermostat housing, so just make sure nothing is leaking and you should be good. All right, so this took about 20 minutes to bleed. Um, right now, ooh, there we go, still bleeding, I guess. Yeah, it's still coming out. But basically, the car, I had my hand on the vents and the heater was not blowing hot. And so I revved it up and revved it up and then the temperature uh, needle started to go up and then the heater started to get hot. And I saw this thing rise, but I hadn't noticed until it was like all the way up here. And so it started overflowing basically a little bit. And then that's why it's all wet right here. And then when I let off, it came down and it was like bubbling and getting all the air out. And then it started blowing hotter and hotter. Right now, they are blowing super hot. And then the temperature, if you guys can see, is right where it should be. A little bit above uh, the quarter mark. So I'm going to let it run like that for about five more minutes, then take it on a test drive. And that should basically get all the air bubbles out. I do need to top off the overflow, as you can see. It's a little over the low line, so I need to put it right where that full line is. What's cool about this setup is, since I have some leftover coolant here, I can just put the plug in like this. And since I want to fill my overflow, I just bring it in here and then pull the plug out. Kind of hard to do with one hand, but pull the plug out and bam. 
so like I said that way nothing comes out so now I'm gonna take this off throw the normal cap back on and take it on a test drive All right, so I just got back from the test drive. Everything was good, temperature was good, heater was blowing hot. I do see that it pulled some coolant out of the overflow tank because I left it above the full line, now it's below. So that's good, it means it was just the hair low and it had to suck some in once I put the cap on and it built pressure. I suggest you guys keep an eye out on it after your first long drive. If it's a little low, just top it off and you should be good. Just make sure there's no leaks if it is like significantly lower but like I said if it's not just top it off and you should be good so just to recap on the tools you will need um, you're gonna need a 3 8 ratchet whether it be this long one or a standard size one you're gonna need a 16 millimeter a 10 millimeter a 13 millimeter and a t30 torx bit and then you're gonna want either a flathead screwdriver or an eight millimeter socket for the worm clamps. You're gonna need one of these trim tools. You're gonna need some slip joint pliers and probably a hammer uh, just to give it a couple taps so that the water pump comes off. What's optional would be this tool tray obviously. Um, electric ratchets, you don't need these. I just used them because it made the job easier. Um, a wire brush. I use this to clean the surface of where the water pump bolts up to the block and some 3 8 hose. Like I said, this is just because I'm lazy and I didn't want to take the underbelly pan off. So I just used this and it worked perfectly. So I don't know. I suggest getting this up to you. Another thing that's optional, but I highly suggest is getting one of these spill proof funnels. Like I said, I will be linking everything down below in the description. And another thing, coolant if you get 50 50 mix you're gonna have to buy two jugs like i said the concentrate is usually either about the same price or just a couple dollars over and then just buy a gallon of distilled water make sure it's distilled and you can make basically two gallons out of one for a lot less money and i have like half of this thing left over so like i said if you were to buy the 50 50 mix you would need two of these which comes out to be more expensive than just buying this and mixing it yourself so there you guys have it like i said it's real simple you guys now know what tools you need and some tips that i shared with you guys so it should be pretty easy shouldn't take you more than let's say an hour and a half two hours max to do it so again i'll be linking everything that i used down in the description below so go ahead and check it out but that's going to be it for this video so thank you guys for watching if you liked it, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep moving forward and stay on the gas.